impacted um, by this immeasurable loss, in particular Mr. Foster's family and friends. We take our responsibility um, to present all of the evidence in any given case to a grand jury very seriously. Um, and in this case in particular, we presented an extensive collection of evidence for the grand jury's consideration. Thank you all for coming out, and I'm happy to take your questions. Absolutely. Well, both of those accusations are, are simply false. Um, first of all, this case, um, the facts were presented by career prosecutors in our office to a Travis County grand jury. A grand jury is a collection of members of our community, our friends and our neighbors who have sworn an oath to be independent from the district attorney's office, to hear all of the facts and evidence and law, and to make their best determination. Um, I will also say that our office had been in contact with Mr. Perry's attorney um, throughout this process. I will say that um, Mr. Perry was afforded the opportunity to testify in front of the grand jury and um, decided against uh, taking that step. In addition, it is true that um, Mr. Perry's attorney presented our office um, with a packet of information and the overwhelming majority of that information was, in fact, presented to the grand jury for their consideration. The um, attorney was also telling me that he's done this for, for years and that typically, even though it might have already been in for consideration, the prosecutor will allow the defense to submit this written. And, and that's exactly what happened in this case. Um, so it was he, was, he presented a, a packet to our office. Our office reviewed the packet, and the overwhelming majority of information in that packet was presented to a grand jury for their consideration. And as I said, um, Mr. Perry was afforded the opportunity to testify in front of the grand jury if he chose, and he declined. So you're saying the idea that the defense is currently putting out there that this was a one-sided presentation is false? It's absolutely false. Well, well, generally the law prohibits us from speaking in any detail um, about what information a grand jury considered. Um, what I will say generally is that of the information um, presented in that packet, the only information we did not um, present to a grand jury is information that would not be permitted uh, in a trial. Any idea on the timeline of that jury trial? Not at this point. Um, you know, there are, uh, we are just getting back up and running uh, for jury trials here in Travis County. We expect trials to begin again in person in the coming weeks. Um, there is a, a long list of cases that are set for trial. Our office and our attorneys are working hard um, to prepare those cases and we will be um, doing our best to, to present all of those cases in a timely manner. Yeah, let me, let me just try to provide um, a little bit of additional information. Um, my understanding is that in Mr. Perry's case, uh, bond was set at $300,000. Um, my understanding is that um, he posted a surety bond and is no longer in custody. Um, my understanding further is that there will be further proceedings on the conditions of his release. And uh, my sense is that those will be the next steps in this case. Dan, what does that sound right? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other any yep. additional, I mean, is going forward to prepare for this jury trial, what is, um, what do you need to do as a prosecutor? Is what needs to be proved at this point further than what you guys presented in, to the grand jury? Well, as I, as I detailed, um, our prosecutors in this office have, have reviewed an incredible amount of evidence um, and have taken, um, you know, done real work to, to prepare in anticipation of presentation to the grand jury. Um, in any case, there is additional work that must be done between um, presenting to a grand jury and preparing for a trial. The, the preparation in this case will be similar to every case we have set for trial.
Well, just as an example, um, our office announced about a month ago new firearm surrender protocols. We have policies in our office um, that require prosecutors to request from a judge that they order um, people who commit acts of violence, particularly with firearms, to surrender their firearms. Uh, that, for example, is a condition that we will be requesting in this case. Generally speaking, our prosecutors assess potential danger to our community um, and based on the facts and circumstances may be requesting other conditions to safeguard our community. Well, I'll just say that, that we will be examining um, all of the circumstances in this case and seeking to, um, to have conditions imposed that we will be sure can keep our community safe. Does he currently live in Texas right now or does he live elsewhere? Can you tell us where he currently is, is uh, posting? I, I can't speak to his residence or his posting. I know that he, um, his capius, his warrant was executed here in Travis County this afternoon. Any other questions? Sorry to make you guys get dressed up and come to all the way down here, but I appreciate it. Good to see you. It's, it's easier to do this all at once than one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you for your time. Um, let us know if you have any follow-up questions. We're happy to try to get you everything you need. Thank you.